well, election year is in full swing. And um, we're watching a lot of things take place, especially with the death of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Now, of course, you have the political theater uh, and showmanship that's going on right now. The Democrats are screaming and hollering foul because President Trump is uh, going to nominate someone shortly after they put her fleshly body to rest. And it's in uh, election year and they want to go ahead and rush this through. And the reason why they want to rush it through because then they would have a 6-3 conservative, 6-3 conservative vote on the Supreme Court. Won't be no more of these 5-4 votes, 5-4 votes. Now you think about this for a second. You all know that anytime we deal with anything in life, be it social, political, economic, religious, perspectives, and point of view, is one thing is for sure is that everybody interprets the law differently. That's the reason why we have a, a divided Supreme Court, a liberal, conservative. Now, if everybody was interpreting the law or seeing the law exactly for what it really truly is, then it wouldn't be all this confusion. But because there's humanity, and there are emotions and whether people like it or not, they do interject what their belief system is. They do interject it. That's the one reason why uh, that freedom of religion is at the very top of the amendments in the Constitution of the United States of America because uh, whether the the poor, ignorant people in this world, and, and, and don't get me wrong, I, I'm, I'm in that uh, category except one thing, I'm just not ignorant. I'm probably middle class, but I'm not ignorant. But uh, one thing about uh, the people that's in this world and stuff is that we can clearly see and comprehend and we're very active concerning what is going on in this world. Also, I've noticed all within less than a mile of my own house. And my own house. Now, mind, I told you I live in a very country, rural area. Remember me telling y'all that. I live in a very country, rural area. And I do mean country. And in this county, uh, you'll see, um, you know, Trump flags. Also, you'll notice that there are the Confederate flags that is associated with these Trump flags. Now, now they're just popping up everywhere. And they put them up because they know that we are the only melanated people, uh, allegedly black community. We're the only ones that's in this area out here. And so they, they got them littered on one street to another. Now, does it affect me? No, because people have freedom of religion and expression. But I will tell you this. The demographics of the people who are flying these Confederate flags and the ones who, um, and I'm talking about the unintelligent, snaggletooth um, people with big fat wives. Um, these people, um, they are very rough looking. Uh, they look worse than the Beverly Hill Billies that actually went to Beverly Hills. Uh, very low-based, uh, tobacco-chewing, uh, cigarette-smoking, skull-dipping, Copenhagen-dipping, and snuff-dipping people. I'm telling you, this. see, that's the type of demographics, though. And even them, who clearly, you know, a lot of people don't know history, but I remember when Lyndon B. Johnson, if you take the poor man and tell him that he is something, even over the black man, even himself would have some type of uh, a country pride in it. And that's what's going on. But, but if you go over on the other side of town, where the middle class or the rich or affluent people in this little small area is, you don't see the display of Confederate flags. You don't see the display of Trump signs, and, and you don't. You just simply don't see all that. And the reason being is because when people are absent words, um, then there's another form of communication that takes place. I get it. I comprehend. I understand it. But again, hey, I, I may not agree with people' political views, social views economic views, religious views. It doesn't trouble me one bit, not at all, because they have the right to actually have those perspectives and views, even though I don't agree with them, because, um, you know, I live in a town where I have literally openly challenged, because, you know, I've got behind the scenes a lot of these preachers up here that tell people how wrong that I am. And they don't have to worry about it, because they, you know, the, the people up here, they cannot stand up under the scrutiny of the social stigma that they would receive from the community as well as their families 
if any of them would ever even think about entertaining the thought to come into assembly down there where we are, especially keeping the commandments of the Most High Yah. They couldn't do it. They would have a nervous breakdown or either commit suicide or something because these people are, are something else up here. They are, man, you've never seen nothing like it before. And so people think that they're using self-autonomy and they're exercising independent thinking and they really truly think that they're functioning out their own volition. But the truth is, uh, the people in this world, especially up here, they really care and they put a lot of weight, more so the weight on what their family thinks, the more so on what everybody else thinks as opposed to what truth is. So, you know, I've, I made no apologies about challenging every single preacher up here who speaks about me behind the scenes. A lot of people do that, you know what I mean? And the sole purpose of doing that is to expose and let people know that, because remember the scripture says that the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. And so with this bold as a lion and Judah roaring the way that I am, I'm actually telling people, I'm drawing a line in a proverbial saying, and I'm telling people, this is the truth. Here are your traditional lies. And don't think you're going to end up going to heaven being in direct opposition of the Most High Yah when he clearly has wrote it down in his word. So the Jesus that they preach and teach is, is just not a reality. It's a fictitious being. It's not the book. It's not the one that's in the book. But I tell you, it's utterly remarkable and amazing when you sit and you watch people today um, that cannot simply be at peace because someone believe something differently than they do. It's utterly amazing. Utterly amazing. I'm sitting up here watching this tractor up here. He's got literally traffic backed up and it's literally going to not even pull over to the side. That's how selfish these people are. Got a big old piece of equipment. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trucks in, in, in a row and all kind of vehicles stretched back about a mile. He could have pulled over in his church parking lot right, but no, he going to get done, get done, don't give a damn what people say. See, that's this world right here. Everybody has got a cold, hard, callous, cruel, vindictive way about themselves. And, um, and, and even me, myself, I, I'm literally having to double down in my spirit because I found out the more kinder and nicer and gentler that you try to be to people, you got to be very, very discerning because everybody don't deserve it. They literally don't deserve it. They, they don't want to be and won't be. I got a lot of digressions going on here, um, but I'm, I'm saying all this because I wanted to, for people to comprehend and understand the type of world that we're in literally the type of world that we're in because the type of world that we're in uh it's going from bad to worse and it ain't gonna get any better we're, we're divided as a country um and the judgment of, of god i'm gonna use that because a lot of people listen on this video it's on this country because they themselves what in the world is he doing this is crazy but anyway because they themselves um are watching the country literally, literally being, uh, how do you put it? Burn up on the east, on the west coast and flooding on the east coast and all in between. And it is just sad. And nobody ever thinks about this because see, we've learned how to adjust ourselves in this country. We have literally learned how to adjust ourselves whenever there's calamity or something that has come up on us as a people, we learn how to make excuses for it. Boy, now this truck is stuck. All the tires are spinning, can't even make that turn. Let's see if we make it now. Jesus. I can't even do a video because I'm sitting here watching these yahoos. I hope nobody comes around that curve and smacks it. It's going to get ugly if they did. Wow. Just about turned the truck over. But anyway, I'm going to let y'all go because I can't be very coherent in making a video right here watching these yahoos up here. And I'm telling you, they, they do some dangerous stuff. I'm going to watch this. I got to watch this. But anyway, yep, he did the same thing. Look, I'm hoping that some way, somehow, that people exercise intelligence and are listening. I don't expect low base minded people. Uh, who have an entitlement mentality, who depend on the government for their upkeep and their care in life. I really, truly, I don't expect them to understand my speech. Um, and I can tell you right now that, that the majority of people in this country don't even pay attention uh, to the poor. The poor is usually dominated over by the rich. 
Uh, but there's a lot of changes that simply have to take place in this world. There really truly is. And I don't think that the powers that be in the country that we live in is even trying to make sure that these changes take place. I just don't. Um, the one thing that has been uncovered in this world is the systemic racism that's been flying under the radar perception for centuries. And now it's all coming out. And now we're watching people who have had the privilege of this racist particular system in society and the privileged society and advantage of this society. Now we're watching them fighting and balking and, and, and really raising hell that, that their system is, is under scrutiny and change is being demanded because they don't want to change. One thing they have let us all know that there's really truly no equality in America. There isn't. So everybody out there in the world who's listening to this message, don't you believe one bit that there is equality in America because it is not. It is not equal justice and equal liberty and equal equal rights and equal freedoms and justice for all. It's not. It's just not. It's only for the majority, and that's it. Y'all bless day. King coming.